Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Carla. I'm the Crazy Cross Stitch Lady and I am so happy that you have been able to join me today in my craft room. Uh, I did a tour of my craft room uh, in one of the first videos that I did, um, but I've made some changes to it and will make, be making a few more changes to it. So once I get that done, then I will probably give you an updated tour of the craft room. I've um, wanted a craft room of my own for a very long time and since my husband and I have moved here into our new home I said that's one of the things that I wanted that was a non-negotiable and we were able to make that happen and so I am very pleased and proud uh, of my craft room and so I, I'm gonna be vain and show it off a little bit <laughs> okay so to start out I want to do a shout out um, uh, and I want to do some shout outs um, to different people um, and maybe not necessarily always cross stitch, but there are so many really neat YouTube channels out there as well as podcasts uh, that may or may not have anything to do with cross stitch, but I just find them really interesting and I thought I would pass those along to you in case you wanted to check them out yourself. Uh, this shout out does deal with cross stitching. Um, the uh, floss tube channel is Jean Farish Needleworks. Um, Jean Farish is a designer. Uh, she has been a designer for over 40 years now, or around 40 years. And I really enjoy her channel because she, she does floss tube-like episodes where she's showing you some of the things that she's been working on. But then she also incorporates a lot of teaching uh, she gives little tips and tricks. Um, anything that happens to come up in communities that she's involved in, uh, where people um, talk about issues or they ask questions about stitching, then she'll bring that up in her videos and she'll give answers to that. And I've been teach teaching, I've been stitching for quite a while, but um, you know, I really didn't have a lot of stitchers around me. And so my stitching has been a little bit, what I would call, you know, I hadn't branched out a whole lot. So even as many years as I've been stitching, I have learned quite a bit from her. Um, little tips and tricks where I never even thought about it before. So um, if you're interested in learning, even whether you've, you're a beginner or whether you have been stitching for quite some time, um, I encourage you to check out her channel. I will put a link to her channel in um, the description below. So you can um, just click on that and check it out if you want to. Okay, next thing I want to give a huge thank you to all the new subscribers that I have. Um, I was really surprised. I was very floored because um, I, I um, teach for a living and um, my students found out that I had a, a YouTube channel and they were like, you have a YouTube channel? I was like, yes, I do. Um, so they decided they wanted to subscribe to it. And of course, being middle schoolers, then they said, Miss Preston, you need some merch. And so I said, well, it, yeah, <laughs> I just, let's, let's not do that, right? <laughs> uh, but you know, they, they get excited. But um, anyway, so, you know, uh, I was talking to a, a fellow stitcher and um, I asked if I should change mine to my channel to an actual floss tube channel. And she said, well, yeah, because you know, you talk about cross stitching. And so uh, I decided to go ahead and do that. And um, that kind of put it out there a little bit more. So the reason I even started doing this was mainly I wanted a video record of the work that I have been doing. And I wanted this for some of my friends who like to see my work and they do craft work too. They don't do cross stitching, but they do craft work and they just like seeing different people's things. So I thought it'd be easier sometimes just to do a video and explain. And it kind of grew from there. Um, and so, um, I, you know, I did it for that and, and just, just like I said, to have a video record of what I've done. I don't do anything fancy. Um, I use my iPhone to record these. Um, you know, I might 
the fanciest I get might be like I'll stick some pictures in here before and after but you know that's that's pretty much it uh, I don't plan on getting really fancy with these it's it's just me and the camera and just wanting to uh, share this love of stitching with uh, people out there and so it's been really neat to see um, people who have been subscribing and that they enjoy stitching and I'm finding more stitchers who are in Kentucky as well um, in my state so um, that's been really neat and it's a neat way to connect with people across the country and uh, even being in groups with people who are overseas and it's it's just been a, a very neat experience so I really appreciate the people who have subscribed and I hope that you enjoy this journey that we take together um, just you know the love of cross stitching and having something that we can enjoy together as a hobby so speaking of um, I do have a couple of whips and right now um, I've decided to limit it to two. I want to do a four, a rotation of four, um, but I've decided just to limit it to two right now because there's one that I really, really want to get done. Um, but well, I will start with, um, there's one that I've been working on that is my first sampler. I've never done a sampler before. Uh, this is called Letters from the North Number no. 2 by Modern Folk Embroidery. Uh, Jacob DeGraff is the designer of this. And um, I don't have it with me, but maybe next time I can explain the, the history and the story behind it. Um, I will be talking about his channel as well because he focuses on samplers. But um, I will... I'm going to try to insert a picture of where I was a few weeks ago after I had just started and then I will show you where I am now. Okay, so this is where I am right now. This is, it, I'm on like the first half of the side, the left hand side and then there will be, of course, the rest of the alphabet will be over here. And this is on 36 count. I think the color is seafoam. I think that's what I said. It was 36 count seafoam Edinburgh linen. Um, this is my first time working with 36 count. I'm doing okay with it, but um, I have eye issues beyond just wearing the glasses. Um, and so I don't know that 36 count likes me very much. Uh, I am going to finish this, uh, but I don't know that I will do anything else on 36 count. Uh, I know people who love 36 count. I know people who do 40 count and it just, it's amazing to me and more power to them. Uh, I, I don't know that I can manage that. So we may be going back down to 28 and 32 count. And that's okay. <laughs> that is okay. But that's where I am on this sampler. This one does not require, it doesn't have a lot of confetti in it. You know, samplers typically don't. Um, so I'm able to do a lot of just straight stitching time. And it gives me a little bit of a break from this one, which is my... Um, Michael Jackson piece. Um, I started this one several years ago. I have been working on it off and on as I'm also working on other things. Um, but I used a program called Pattern Maker for Cross Stitch. It's, it came on CD. Um, they really don't offer it anymore. I looked to see and it's really not out there. Uh, it's a pretty good program to transfer. It transfers photographs into cross stitch patterns. And I, I wanted to do that and just have a program I could always use rather than paying someone else to transfer the pattern because that can get pretty expensive. Um, so because that doesn't exist anymore and my um, CD was uploaded to an old computer and I don't know that I can get access to that now. Um, I may be doing other pictures if I do something like this again in through PC Stitch. I've been checking that out. It looks promising. Um, so um, if any of you use PC Stitch and you've had good luck with it, let me know. Uh, I would appreciate that. Um, but 
uh, I have I think I'm, I'm probably going to try that out uh, and the, the neat thing I can tell you about PC stitch if you don't know much about it is it's it's completely online and they will let you try out every feature of their program they don't lock any of their features but the kicker is um, if you want to print out save or print out any uh, any pictures that you have made into patterns you have to purchase the program so that that's the kicker thing right there that's that's what will get you but if I'm pleased enough with all the features, to me, it's worth making the one-time investment. It is expensive. I think when I checked, it was 50, I think, $50. I'll double check. Um, but to me, it would be worth it because I'm the kind of person who, I like, I like full coverage um, patterns and I would use it enough to justify the cost. Now, if there's one thing you want to do and you just want to do that one picture and that's it, it may be better just to have someone do that for you. I don't really trust a lot of programs online, especially the ones who claim that they're free because they're very difficult to use. They may not do a great job of transferring the photo into an actual pattern. And uh, I do know you have to be careful with these because if you don't, you need to max out the colors. Uh, if you don't max out the colors, and um, you may have to adjust for some redness and that kind of thing, because some of them typically lean, they may, the colors may seem a little redder than they should. Um, your picture is going to look pixelated, and then when you stitch it, it's going to look bad. Um, I have seen some people who have stitched pictures that normally would have been awesome and like they've spent all that time stitching it and it just doesn't look that great. I hate to say that and put it that way, but it, it doesn't. Um, so when I did this pattern, um, I maxed out the colors. I put it at 18 count. I, I was stitching on Ada. I don't see the point in stitching on even weave or stitching on any like linen or anything because those are more expensive fabrics, first of all. And I don't even worry about colors or anything. I just do white or ivory, white or ivory, because this is full coverage. When you do full coverage, nobody's going to see the fabric. So I don't see the point in spending a lot of, a lot more money or worrying about colors if nobody's going to see it. So this is on 18 count white Ada. That also helps with keeping it from looking pixelated. Uh, and so um, I'm, I'm still having to work some on the glove and down at the very bottom. This is a still shot from the Motown 25 special and he's in a position where he's singing. I have titled this The Master at Work um, because uh, one of his quotes, he, he, he said something about how, um, he said, there's no better education than watching the masters at work. And I thought, well, you're one of them. So um, I titled this The Master at Work. So this is, um, I'll, I'm going to, again, try to put a picture up showing, or insert a picture showing where I was back in like three weeks ago and then now. Okay, so here he is. All right, so that's where I am. And I'm still working on the glove. I'm almost done. I've almost got it. But working on the glove, and I'm working on this whole strip across the bottom. Now, here's the problem. When I first started this, I didn't measure enough. Uh, and I want to frame this. I do know that. I'm going to have this professionally framed. So, what I'm going to have to do is take the edge here. I'm going to have to trim that off. And then I'm going to have to get some more 18 count Ada. It matches up. And I'm going to sew a few inches onto each side um, to make sure that there's enough there for them to be able to stretch it a little bit and frame it once I take it to the framers. So, that's where I'm with him, but as you can see, um, especially with the shirt and some with his face and with the microphone, there is a lot of confetti, a 
lot of confetti. So I work on him some and then I have to take a break <laughs> because I get to the point where I was like, I can't take this anymore. Um, I was like, I just need some very relaxing, it's one color and I'm just stitching for a while. So that's where my sampler comes in. <laughs> so that's, that's where I am. It will be so worth it when it gets done. And when he died, I was in mourning because he's my favorite singer. And um, so I wrote a poem because I like to write. So I wrote a poem about him and I'm going to frame the poem as well and put half of it on one side and half on the other. So the poems will be, they'll kind of act like sconces and, and frame him. Um, so it should look pretty good when it gets done, but it's just getting done. <laughs> so we're getting there. Uh, we're getting there. I would really like to put him into or enter the piece into the state fair. Uh, one of my bucket list things, I would love to have a blue ribbon from the state fair. Um, have, I've, I've won some prizes before, but I haven't gotten that yet. So that's just, that's one of my things I would like to have at some point. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I have one, let's see, let me find it here. I did this. Uh, this is Windrose Mandela should be Mandala by DD Designs. Um, this was stitched on 28 count opalescent, I think it's purple, it's a purple color. And I think I showed this before. Okay, so here it is. And uh, I want to, I think I may work on it today. I, I need to trim all this excess cloth off and I'm going to use this fabric for other things. I've got plenty of fabric that I can use for these other things and I want to put it in a white frame and I don't want a lot of bling on the frame itself, although I thought about putting some ribbon and I thought, well, I don't know, we'll see. Um, but I want to get that framed and put up in my craft room soon. So. If I get a chance, I may work on that today. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay, now my stash star. Um, this is something I've had for not too long, a little while, but it's another sampler, but I was, I, I was really fascinated with it because I love the West. I love everything about the West, and I've been out West. Um, I've been to California, I've been to Sacramento, I've been to Nevada, and uh, Washington State, and I just find it very fascinating. Um, so this is uh, called Great Plains Sampler, and it is by Ginger and Spice. And here is the sampler. And they, somebody had taken the border and they also stitched it onto that um, bread cloth, bread plate cloth, so. Oh, that was really cool. Um, it's very large too. I mean, it, it folds way out. And it describes the sampler um, and describes some of the things on it. Uh, it says, figures and scenes on the sampler represent people and places of the Great Plains. Lewis and Clark mapped the westward march for the government led by an Indian woman, Sacagawea, who carried her small son on her back for the two-year journey. Indians used the buffalo for food and clothing. Settlers began to move westward, but some sat at their campfires wondering what they had gotten themselves into. The Pony Express carried mail. Farmers planted and reaped grains, and wagon trains brought more people. The stagecoach arrived with later movers, and the advent of the train opened the country where settlers had struggled before. Corn, wheat, and sunflowers grew, cattle was raised, farms were built, and folks settled in. Mount Rushmore was carved to commemorate four great presidents, Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt, and Lincoln. So this represents all of that. This model was stitched by a lady named, let's see where she is, Chris Clesius from Kansas. This was stitched on 18 count Ada. Um, 
and that is that size was a 16 and a half by 15 so it's pretty large they do have a sampler series uh, is the America Sampler series. So they have Pennsylvania Sampler, New England Sampler, Southern Sampler, California, Southwest, Mid-Atlantic, and Midwest, as well as this Great Plains one. So I thought that was pretty cool. But I will also put this, excuse me, I will also put this in the description section so you can look this up if you want to. All right, and I have my um, Crazy Craft Tip. All right, so my crazy craft tip for today is that, and I know experienced stitchers will know this and will have experienced this, but if you haven't been stitching for very long, which I'm doing a lot of tutorials that are aimed at beginner stitchers or people who just simply haven't been stitching for a long time, but you need to invest like in good quality, there are two things that you need to make sure are really good quality. And those are your needles and your scissors. Your needles and scissors are your tools of the trade. Um, and I won't mention a certain company, but there's a certain very popular company. Uh, they make many products and people use them quite a bit. Um, I use a lot of their products and they have very good products but one of the things that is not that high quality and a lot of people would agree with me are their needles the needles um, if, if you have a needle that when you pull it through it tends to either grab the fabric or it feels like it's kind of catching and scraping against the fabric as you pull it through, no good, no good. There are um, several types of good needles out there. You can either even Google um, top cross stitch needles um, and they will come up with a list. Um, John James is a good brand. Um, I haven't really had a lot of experience with John James, but a lot of people talk about how nice they are. Um, and I honestly don't know how expensive they are, but that's something that you can look into if you're interested. The needles I use are Bohen needles. Um, they are French, for a French, French company. And there's this is what the package looks like. They are not expensive. Um, they, they are a, a tiny bit more expensive than certain ones that you can buy maybe in craft stores like Michael's, but um, not, not by an appreciable amount. So um, these are the needles I use. I love them. They just glide through the fabric. Uh, they're very well made. They're sturdy. They don't break as easily as other needles do. If you found that you've got needles that are breaking easily, that's a good sign. You probably need to find a different brand of needle. So um, even if they're just a tiny bit more expensive, you're still better off investing in a really good needle. The other thing are the scissors. Now, um, there are some very, very expensive sewing scissors out there. And, and they're very good. Um, I received a pair as a gift. They're a dream. They are awesome. I would not have bought them on my own. Um, so maybe you can put it on Christmas list. <laughs> but um, these are sewing scissors. Let's see. Let me grab my other pair here. I showed this in one of my tutorials. Okay, so... These are scissors that you can use um, for quilting, some, you know, uh, just regular sewing. These scissors right here, you can get them in any craft store. Um, these are, I think they're Fiskars, are they? No, these are loops and threads. Fiskars also has, you've seen these scissors before. Um, you can use these with your cross stitching, but they are a little bit bulky. And I know a lot of times quilters use the larger scissors too. But for cross-stitching, when you're snipping your thread, um, 
I think some may call these, um, let's see, peacock or stork scissors. Um, it's like these. And you see, let me put my hand behind it. Do you see how small that tip is? And then it should glide like that. Okay, so that's a very small tip. And it just helps you, if you're having to snip thread, it helps you get in there really close without cutting your fabric. So um, I would definitely invest in one of these pairs. That's, that these are like a, a, just a better quality scissor. So you may not like these, you may prefer something else, but I would, I would just recommend to you to invest in a really good pair of sewing scissors and don't use them for anything else and don't let anybody else use them. Hide them if you have to. <laughs> and also invest in um, really good needles. Uh, and then have a, a really good place to store them. Okay, so that's my tip. Now, um, I think I said last time I would do some um, get to know your needle worker questions. I know a lot of people do those questions, so I thought I would j just for the fun of it, uh, just so you can get to know me a little bit better. Um, where do you live? I live in central Kentucky. Um, I'm I'd say I know most people who are outside of the state are probably familiar with the city of Louisville, um, probably about 45 minutes south of there. Um, what do you do for a living? I am a public school teacher. I teach middle school. And uh, like I had said before, my students, some of my students found out I have a YouTube channel. I said, you have a YouTube channel? <laughs> so they got really excited. Um, and um, wanted to uh, market my brand, so to speak. I said, well, yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> so anyway, um, but yes, it's, um, I'm, I'm nearing retirement. Um, I still have a few years left. Um, and that's one of the things with teaching is that um, you can retire a little bit earlier, but you know, there's a reason for that because it's just the nature of the job. Just like uh, if you're in the army, you can retire after 20 years, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I'm getting close, but usually most teachers who retire do something else. There's like another job that they want. I, I would really like to maybe um, look into a craft business of some sort. Um, so that's just something I'm kind of thinking about. Um, but in the meantime, um, I'm still there with my kiddos. And um, so we're, we're just um, getting through this pandemic the best that we can. It's It's been a rocky road the last few years. It's been very interesting, but I have learned a lot. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, do you have any children? Um, about a hundred a year, <laughs> but no, as far as my own, my own children, I do not have any. Um, I just made that choice a long time ago, and I, I basically said, if I don't have children by 30, I'm just not going to, and that was a personal decision on my part, but um, I do have all of the kids at school, and you know, when I'm there, they're my kids, and that's how I see it, so that's, um, and that's just how I have, um, decided to handle that part of my life. Uh, do you have any pets? No, I don't have any right now. I used to, I grew up with lots of dogs. Uh, we'd have, well, we had one dog at a time, but uh, I grew up with a collie, a couple of collies actually, and a couple of Shelties, a little um, miniature little Shetland sheep dogs. And so we had a couple of those. And um, I have owned a, a cat um, and so I've, we, you know, we were a dog and cat family, um, and I had a hamster at one time. When I was a teenager, my parents got me a hamster. Her name was Belle, so she's a little teddy bear hamster. So I've had my share of pets. I just don't have any right now. Okay. Um, let's see. What are your other hobbies besides stitching? Well, um, I like to collect bells. I have many bells. Every time I travel somewhere, I like to get a bell. Um, let's see. What I like to read. I read uh, as much as I can. Um, let's see, what else do I do? Those are like the two big things other than my cross stitching. 
I have dabbled in quilting. I would like to incorporate some of that in my cross stitching. I just haven't really done that a lot yet. Um, oh, yes, and I do like to watch classic movies. And when I mean classic movies, I mean movies from like the 1930s, 1940s. I like the silent films as well, so I really enjoy those. Um, number six, and that leads to number six, actually. What is your favorite movie? Well, I, it's kind of a tie, and they're two very, very different movies. One is um, Jesus of Nazareth. I like to watch that every Easter. I think that movie was very well done, even though uh, the depiction of Jesus um, was a white European, and we know he wasn't white or European, but um, I think that Robert Powell, who played Jesus, just did an excellent job um, with his demeanor and just the way that he came across. Uh, I just really enjoy that movie. And the other one is called The General. Um, the main character is played by my favorite actor, who is Buster Keaton. He's a silent film star. And The General um, is a Civil War movie, and Civil War is my favorite time period to study. And so that is my one of my other favorite movies. Uh, what is your favorite TV show? Well, right now it is The Crown. I am obsessed with British royalty. I love watching documentaries about them. I like studying them. I've got some books on British royalty. And so I have really enjoyed that series. Uh, what is your favorite book? Uh, my favorite book is a book called Vanity Fair. I like classic literature. It's by William Makepeace Thackeray. Um, most people would not read a book like that unless they are um, English majors or they just are really into classic literature. That's, it's, I don't really read a lot of modern culture books that come out. I just, I've always liked classic literature. I have a master's degree in English and so that's just kind of my thing. <laughs> um, what is your favorite music? Well, I'm gonna say pop rock, but hello! <laughs> Right there. <laughs> so yes, Michael Jackson's my favorite singer. I know um, a lot of controversy surrounding him and um, a lot of stuff going on the last several years. Um, I think he was a very troubled soul. Um, I don't know that I believe everything that was put out about him. Um, I know he had some difficulties, but I, I really, I just focus on um, his his talent and just the the mastery of singing and dancing that he was able to accomplish and so I, I focus on that okay what one word best describes you that was a hard question um, I'd say probably determined because it's not that I've never given up on anything there are some things where I'm like okay that's whatever never mind but normally even if I get really frustrated with something, I'm going to try to find a solution or find some way to deal with it somehow. Uh, number, let's see, number 11. Uh, let's see, how were you introduced to cross stitch? Um, I was in college and I had, uh, she wasn't my roommate, but she lived down the hall and we had gone to high school together. And so one day we were just kind of sitting around and she had been working on some of her cross stitch stuff and I was curious, <clears throat> wanted to know what it was. And she showed me and then um, she had a little kit um, and she let me work on that kit just to see if I would like it and see how I did with it. And she was really pleased with how I, I had done it. Uh, and so it just grew from there. Uh, so that would have been Let's see, tell my age here. Um, that probably would have, I think it was, it was either the beginning of 1992 or towards the end, let's see. Actually, I think it would have been towards the end of 1992 that she showed me how to do that. So, you know, we're, we're looking at 30 years this year. <laughs> so. Okay, uh, let's see. Do you have a favorite designer? 
Well, I love full coverage pieces. Um, I haven't done a lot of them, but I like them. And they do take a while, but they're worth it. Um, Artisy has a lot of neat designs. Heaven and Earth designs, they have some really neat ones. But really, um, any design that catches my eye, I'm, I'm fine with that. I don't really have any particular designers that I've really latched onto. Um, what floss brand do you use? Um, I use DMC. I have lately been branching out and trying to look at other brands and try them out because I would like to expand a little bit and see. There may be some others that I really like, but uh, DMC is a really good brand. I know for sure that it's all color fast um, and it, they're, it's, it's strong and um, they, they have plenty of colors to choose from and they have their variegated floss. Um, their metallics, eh. I've, I've used their metallics and I've got a way to use them where it it's doable. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I pretty much stick with DMC, although I am trying some different brands. Uh, what is your fabric of choice? Well, I think we all know now it's probably not going to be anything that's 36 count. Um, probably going to be 28 or 32 count. I'd say Lugana. Um, I, I like the even weaves, what we call even weaves anyway. Uh, I do use Ada. I don't have a problem with using Ada on anything. Um, I don't, I don't, there's no, you know, I know usually beginners use Ada, but I know people have been stitching for 30 plus years and all they've used is Ada. So, you know, that that's just not a big deal, but I use that and I do like Lugana. I do like how that feels though. Uh, do you use a needle threader or are you a floss licker? I'm not ashamed. I'm a floss licker. I don't like threaders. I've used them. It's awkward. So I just lick my floss and go on. <laughs> do you prefer stitching in hand or with a hoop? Um, I like using a hoop. Um, my preferred method now since I was introduced to it is Q-snap because I like some tension in my fabric and the Q-snap gives a lot of tension, uh, a lot more than a hoop does, even though hoop does a pretty good job. Um, I've never tried a scroll frame. I don't know that I want to because I like to stitch with one hand. Um, that one you pretty much do two-handed, but I don't know. We'll see. I may try a frame at some point. I don't like stitching in hand unless I have to. Now with the, the Michael Jackson one, I ha at the very bottom, you, hoop's not, you're not going to be able to get a hoop in there. That's not really going to cut it. So... I do that in hand, like little ones I'll do in hand and it's not a big deal. But if I can use a hoop or if I can use a Q-snap, I'd rather do that. Uh, what has been your worst experience while stitching? Well, I don't remember what the piece was now. I think my brain just blocked it. <laughs> but uh, I was working on a piece one time and I had gotten quite a bit stitched. And then something wasn't right. I had really messed up in one spot and I can't remember exactly how I messed it up. And I thought, hmm, I am not frogging all this. I, not, I'm just not doing it, not doing it. So instead of frogging it, I folded it up. Now this, and it was on Ada too, so it wasn't super expensive fabric, but I folded it up and I threw it in the trash. And I hate that I did that, but I couldn't stand to look at it anymore, and I was done. And I said, we're going to be a little more careful from now on. <laughs> uh, let's see. Have you introduced anyone else to cross-stitch? Yes, I have. Uh, one of the advantages to being a teacher is that you can start clubs very easily. Uh, so I thought, you know what? I want to pass this along to some of my students. And so I have had... Uh, our, our mascot is the hawk, and so I have had uh, what I call my Stitching Hawks Club, um, and so I have a few girls every year who join, and they're between the ages of anywhere between like 11 and 13, and um, some of them have been in my club for a few years, um, and I even have one in high school who really wanted to stay in the club, and um, I talked to the principals. They were okay with that. And so we let her stay in and um, it's just they have learned a lot and they've been stitching some on some pieces. And 
So um, I'm really happy that I've been able to pass the love of stitching on to these girls. And hopefully, uh, and, and I wanted some boys, I've had boys in there too. And I want to make sure this is for boys too, um, because it's there's still kind of this cross stitching is for girls, you know, sewing's for girls. And we know that's, that's not the case. You know, that's not the case at all. Um, but I really hope that that this is a hobby that they can take with them as they grow up. And even if they leave it for a little bit, it's something that maybe they, they might come back to and it will provide them some peace and calm and joy uh, in their lives, um, maybe sometimes when they need it the most. Um, what was your first project? It was the little kit that my friend gave me when she was teaching me how to cross stitch and it. I remember it was a half slice of watermelon and I think we just left it in the little hoop that came with it. And I wish to goodness that I still had it. I really, really wish I still had it and I have no idea what's happened to it. Don't have any idea what's happened to it, um, which is regrettable to me. I really wish I had my very first piece, but you know, such is life. Um, but I do remember what it was. Um, but it, yeah, it was a little um, half slice of watermelon. Um, and last one, how do you store your floss? Well, currently I store my floss on bobbins, um, but um, I think I'm switching everything over to um, floss drops because I've, I've been using some floss drops and I just think that it's just easier to pull the thread that you want rather than unwrap, 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 you know, and you can just take your needle and then just pull it out and it's just a whole lot easier. And I have decided on what kind of storage system I want, which is in this closet back here uh, where I can hang my floss drops when I'm not using them. Uh, so we will see how that goes. Okay, that is it. I think I've covered, I've got all my notes here, so I covered everything. Um, but um, I hope that you um, enjoyed hanging out with me a little bit today and maybe you were stitching along as I was talking, which I like to do sometimes when I'm watching or listening to other floss tube channels. Um, but I really hope that um, you stay safe, that um, you're um, enjoying your stitching or any other crafts that you might be working on. So um, I just hope that you are blessed, that you are creative, and I will see you next time.